Go ahead. So I grew up in the country, but I'm kind of impressed by cities. Um, they're pretty amazing things. And over 80% of Americans live in cities now, and that's a growing um, proportion. Um, but cities have some challenges, as we know. There's a lot of problems that happen in cities, crime, uh, pollution, things like that. Um, part of what the issue comes from is that we don't live in cities that look like this in the United States so much as grids. And that's not an accident. Um, in 17... 85, the National Land Ordinance by the Continental Congress, our forefathers, create, implemented the Roman grid for westward expansion. So the grid would go west, and with it would efficiency, but also um, would not go with it is public spaces as much. So the United States has the lowest amount of public spaces uh, in first world countries, and the highest level of crime. And we at City Repair don't think that's an accident. If you look at an image like this, this is a great artist's rendering of, um, you know, the, the public space is available on most city streets. It's really just a sidewalk. And you'll notice there's that one guy who's staring into the window of a shop because that's really the only outlet, right? Um, you, if you want a space to go into, it's going to become a retail space, most likely. And your sense of belonging may become more consumerist uh, as a result rather than something uh, more community or neighborhood oriented. So what's available within those design constraints? Well, you have intersections. That's the, probably the largest open space that a lot of people have. And in the old days, that's where people would hang out. But with cars now, that's a problem. In Portland in the 90s, there was um, two, two girls were killed in a, by traffic. And some people got together in the, their neighborhood and decided that something had to change. And what could they do? to provide a safer space, more connection in their community, a way to know each other better, and intersection repair was born. This is the process of a community getting together to do a street mural, and what that involves is coming up with an agreed upon design uh, that reflects their values, uh, something that would actually motivate them to get together and do this. They've blocked off the streets with their cars, and they're taking ownership for this intersection. And here we go. This is probably a place where people have spent you know, years paying 30-year mortgages. And, and why not take, take space for themselves? I mean, what good is public space if it's not public, right? Um, in fact, one of the founders of City Repair, um, Mark Blakeman, said, by God, what good is the freedom of assembly if there's no place to assemble? And this is the first um, intersection repair project, and that's um, his intersection there. This was where the first, uh, I guess, claimed um, tiny uh, free library was, and they're now all over the world. Um, also, there's a 24-hour uh, self-serve solar-powered tea station. Um, they've spread all over. Um, in Portland, there's upwards of uh, 350 projects now. Um, there's sites all over the intersections, all over the city, and once a year during the village building convergence, people do these things. And they repaint them every year as well with a new design in places where they've already happened. Um, and you can imagine the diversity and the neighborhood identification that takes place. Those are all intersections in Portland that have these things now. Um, and it's an amazing multi-generation activity. I mean, you can see kids there being involved, um, some sophisticated designs as well. Um, and for me, it's really interesting because it's the first time that I felt like I, as an artist, professional artist, could see myself working with kids in a way that's not just sort of as a mentor or, you know, the way a parent might, but because kids have a sense of possi what's possible that is far exceeds most adults. Um, and, you know, it's not just about intersections either. There's all kinds of opportunities. This kind of space, maybe that's an easement, maybe that's private property, maybe that's public property, but it gets you to challenge these assumptions about what space is for. In, in the course of three months from the first intersection repair, which was not permitted by the city, um, people in Portland made the, uh, the uh, city, the, sort of the uh, intersection repair ordinance was approved, and 22,000 intersections became available for free intersection repairs. Um, so think small at first. Here's some street art. And in Santa Barbara, um, this is a new thing for us, but this is a local group in Santa Barbara uh, when it was introduced in a workshop. And um, just making maquettes of what would you want to do in an intersection? Um, that their model is actually a model of, uh, in the larger picture, a model of that block where it all started in Portland. Um, they took down their fences. And Santa Barbara Open Streets, we tried out taking over some space 
and uh, did a big chalk um, mural on the ground. And, and did a lot of things, provided uh, free box, uh, there was seed bombs, there was gardening classes, and really a, a, a coherent group has formed. We also gathered information from people about their places and what they would want there, intersections and all kinds of um, sites um, where people might step up and become what's called a site lead and take ownership with their, their local neighborhood. And everyone else would be there to help them out. Um, so we've been gathering that information, but really it's not about the, the site. There's Dave. Uh, Dave got me to go swimming finally after it was October, but it was still summer, um, because he wanted to go swimming. So, you know, things like this just come out of these situations where a community is formed. And I, I think that our crew is pretty special. Um, and our next project is this underpass on Quarantina, by far the worst underpass in Santa Barbara. Um, we're going to clean it up, and we hope people join us too. And then we'll make art on the fences and, and all over the place there, because that's where some of our friends live, and they want to improve their neighborhood. This is also a collaboration with Fishbone. And I want to leave you with this site. Uh, this is a trail guardian on the uh, Rattlesnake Canyon Trail. This is a, an example of emergent art. This is uh, generative art, where no one person, I think, necessarily is responsible for this at all. Everyone leaves offerings in its mouth and feels a sense of belonging uh, by going there. Thank you.